Hi there, welcome to this video where we're going to share with you our top 10 tips for beginner mushroom farmers. So when I first started growing mushrooms, there really wasn't a lot of good information, especially online at the time. So I learned most things either from textbooks, forums, or to be honest, a lot of it was a lot of trial and error. And that took a lot of time and made a lot of mistakes, spent a lot of money on stuff that I didn't need to. So in this video, I just want to share with you some of the things I wish I'd known right at the start and give you our top 10 tips for people that are just getting started growing mushrooms. So my first tip then is to get started with a mushroom kit. And the reason for that is it's just the easiest, quickest, simplest way to get to the point where you've got a fully grown crop of mushrooms ready to harvest. And this just has this effect where it just draws you in and makes you want to learn even more. If you just jump in at the deep end and start trying to do a lot more complicated processes, you're quite likely to end up with a load of mold, might well put you off and you might never get to the point where you get really into this as a hobby. So start with a kit. It's also a good way to begin learning a little bit about how to take care of your crop as it develops, to give it the right humidity, learn when to harvest. So you can learn a lot in those early stages. And of course, it also just, you know, it has this effect of creating a lot of fascination and interest. The mushrooms grow really, really fast and you get inspired and it makes you want to go on and learn a little bit more. So there are a load of places you can buy kits online. If you're in the UK, you can get one from us. Uh, if you're in the US, there are various places like Field and Forest, North Spore, or do check out The Mindful Mushroom. That's one of our course members that also sells kits in the US. And wherever else you are, just have a look online. So that's a great start. And the second tip for those wanting to take things a step further is this, choose the easiest cultivation method and species to begin with. Similar to using a grow kit, this will allow you to get off to a great start and seeing good results early on will not just be rewarding for you, but will also build momentum to learn more about how amazing mushrooms are and what a different crop they are to grow. Now you see there's a wide variety of different techniques that you can use to grow mushrooms and many require a very detailed understanding, some even a whole new skill set called aseptic technique. I think it's best for you to start by growing oyster mushrooms using high quality grain spawn, straw pellets or hardwood pellets and proper cultivation bags like these. I'll link to a workshop here where we show you in more detail what we believe is the easiest way to get to your first crop. Then, once you've found your feet, have confidence you can branch out to more challenging varieties and methods. Tip number three then is to start by pasteurizing your substrate using cold water techniques. So a lot of mushroom growers, probably the majority of them, uh, will tend to sterilize their substrate and there's a lot of advantages to that. However, it's also something where you need a lot more equipment and it takes you more time to learn the process. And in my opinion, it's much easier to get started just by using something like a cold water lime bath like we use here with a high pH level instead. And that has the effect of pasteurizing your substrate. It knocks out most of the living organisms that might compete for the food source. And it's a much easier method. It just involves cold water plus the addition of something like hydrated lime. And we have a separate video on that if you want to check it out. Five different methods you can use for cold water pasteurization. And it's a much easier way for you to get started uh, producing your own clean substrate. So sticking with the theme of keeping it simple by using a low-tech cold water pasteurization method, it's also important to carefully consider your substrate. So tip four is this, choose a substrate that's readily available in your area and that doesn't contaminate easily. Now, I feel this is another reason why it makes sense to start off by using oyster mushrooms, because did you know that they can grow on more than 150 different types of substrate? Isn't that incredible? It also means that chances are there's something available in your local area that you you can use. So by all means start to look around in your local area to see what is around. Most woody fibrous materials like sawdust, straw, sugarcane bagasse, hemp, corn cobs, they're great candidates for your substrate. Now when we ran an urban farm not too far away from here we used to grow on tons of coffee waste. It's clearly available in abundance in cities. Now we're in the countryside here we've got access to this lovely organic straw which is great to use as substrate. So have a look around and maybe test a couple of options out to see what works for you but be careful to avoid really nitrogen rich substrates as these are more prone to contamination. Also avoid substrate which involves the need for a sterile process because this complicates matters a lot as you'll need a clean room like a lab style setup. There's a link below this video for you to learn more about substrates. 
So the next tip then is not to try and produce your own spawn at the start. Just buy it from a professional spawn producer and then maybe later on if you're interested in that you can always come back and learn spawn production. But if you start out doing that at the beginning you're going to need a whole lot of additional equipment to create a sterile space and you're going to need to learn a whole load of techniques, aseptic technique, in order to have good quality spawn. All of that stuff takes a lot of time and obviously money as well. So this just cuts out a large part of that learning process if you just start off by buying the spawn from a professional producer. Now when I started growing mushrooms I actually did the opposite of that. I dove in at the deep end, I bought all this equipment, made a lab and I spent about five or six months learning the process of how to produce my own spawn which was really interesting and I know a lot of other people find that fascinating as well. However it took such a long time to get to that point that I actually wish in retrospect that I started off just buying spawn from somewhere else and focusing on the substrate and the mushroom production instead. And it's a much quicker way to get to the point where you actually have mushrooms to show, you have reliable production right from the start. If you produce your own spawn, the chances are you're going to end up with lots of uh, mouldy bags of grain in the beginning and it interrupts your production. So start with a professional producer and then later on if you do want to come back and produce your own spawn, you already have that knowledge of how to nurture mycelium, how to uh, grow it well and it will make it a much quicker and simpler process to then go ahead and learn spawn production. Right, on to tip six then. It's really important for you to consider where you want to grow mushrooms. Now the good news is that you don't actually need all that much space to grow them. That's not just because they grow very quickly, compared to other crops, but also because you can make good use of vertical space. To give you some idea of this high output, it's perfectly possible to grow 125 kilograms of mushrooms in only one square meter per year. That's pretty incredible, right? And equates to 25 pounds per square foot in a year. So onto what space you can use to grow them in. Within reason, you can really convert most spaces to grow mushrooms in. What I would recommend is to start looking around and see what small bits of space you can start with that you already have. So this could be a cupboard, an empty room or a garage, for instance. Of course, you can create a controlled environment like we have done here with these shipping containers behind me but it's important for you to know that you have other choices as well you can grow mushrooms outside as well of course you can do this on logs but also in a bed in your garden this might be the perfect use of that shady spot you might not know what to do with so for your bed you can grow a variety of mushrooms but the one I love in particular is the stropharia mushroom it's really aggressive it's not too picky which means a high chance of success and the taste is absolutely amazing I'll link to a video on how to make a mushroom bed here Tip number seven then is not to rush out and buy a whole load of equipment that you may not actually need. First, take some time to think about what kind of a mushroom grower you want to be, what kind of mushroom varieties you want to grow, what kind of methods that you actually want to use. Uh, and this can just help you to avoid spending money that you don't need to uh, and waste a lot of time. So when I first started growing, I went to visit another mushroom farmer and I basically just copied the equipment setup that he had, which led me to buy five of these big all-American uh, pressure sterilizers. I built a couple of uh, large HEPA filter flow hoods like this and constructed a lab. And that was just because I was trying to copy what he did. And it took me a good couple of years to actually learn that I prefer a different method of growing that doesn't involve or need this equipment. Now I did get good use out of these bits of equipment and this one still gets used once a year to pasteurize apple juice in. But the point is you can avoid a whole load of uh, cost and expense just by first taking a bit of time to learn what methods and equipment you actually need for the type of growing that you want to do. So my next tip is this, if you want to start a farm, start small with a basic setup and adapt and allow it to grow from there. So this has a few advantages. It will allow, allow you to find your feet, work out the whole process and what's involved and it allows you to build your confidence. It also makes sure that you don't have to commit large amounts of your time and money. Now I know a fair few people who are immediately thinking of growing 200 kilograms per week each week of the year. In some cases this works out, other cases it doesn't, which is heart-wrenching to see. In some cases, the reason for going big is so they can take a full-time income out of it. And I get it, but there's a big difference between plans made in a spreadsheet and actually delivering on them. Ba back to the basic setup then, you can start by soaking your substrate in something like this blue barrel I have here, or a steel drum or a big IBC of course. And you could use a hydroponics tent as a grow room for instance. You can opt for seasonal production, removing the need for temperature control. And of course, Adam already mentioned all of the cold water pasteurization techniques that you can benefit from. Tip number nine then is to learn from more experienced growers. 
Now I know a lot of people like to just learn themselves by doing and I completely understand that because that's how I like to learn as well. But I also know that for a lot of people, it's much quicker, more efficient and more enjoyable to learn from other people who have already got that knowledge that they've spent years building up. There's a whole range of places that you can go to learn like this. It might be you know, making a visit to a local farm, it might just be learning from textbooks or YouTube channels, or you might look to go on a one day course somewhere or perhaps join an online course community like the one that we run. Just enables you to connect with other people all around the world that are doing the same thing as you, people that have got more experience and it will make you a much better grower much quicker. Now for the final tip, tip 10, don't be daunted by growing mushrooms. Too many people think it is a tricky crop to grow and it doesn't need to be. Of course you can make it very complicated with high tech setups, but that's not the only option open to you. If you follow the tips Adam and I shared in this video, the chances are that you'll see good success right from the beginning without it needing to be difficult, expensive or big in scale. And you know what? If you have some banks that fail, don't beat yourself up about it. See it as an opportunity to increase your knowledge and skills instead. So what went wrong this time and how can you do it differently next time? It can be the case that you got a very small detail wrong and of course this can be frustrating but at the same time if you get that same detail right you'll see success time and time again. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Both Adam and I hope that it will enable you to have success in your mushroom growing. And if you're ready to learn more, do be sure to check out our hour long free workshop. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.